Hello, my name is Time for joining us on our discussion program focused live on OGTV. At this time of um, the week, um, we come around to discuss issues that um, affect us as individuals and um, society at large. And today, we are also looking at um, what affects us as a society. And uh, today, uh, we are looking in the direction of uh, energy. My name is Karoli Taiwo, and um, our topic for today is energy and sustainable development in Nigeria, the way forward. Uh, to discuss this on the program here with me today already in the studio um, is a barrister at law and um, one who has um, a deep knowledge of um, the energy environment in this country, barrister Oluru Timi Sunday. Is it Oluru Timi or Oluru Timi? Uh -huh, okay, okay. Barrister well, Duton is with us in the studio, and together in the next couple of minutes, we shall be looking at this aspect of our national life, um, energy and sustainable development in Nigeria, the way forward. Well, um, once again, I welcome you, sir. Thank you. All right. Um, when we say energy and sustainable development, uh, maybe we take it one. Um, we put it in perspective energy, energy sector what and what areas of um, um, energy are we really talking here that will have uh, relevance in the uh, national development well thank you very much um, first, the basic thing is that no country can develop without having uh, sufficient electricity uh, having electricity comes in two ways. Either you have electricity uh, through the national grid or off grid, that's one way. The other one that is quite common is self generation when you use your own generator. But that's always more expensive, five times more expensive than getting energy from the grid. However, the most important thing that Nigerians also have to know is that they have a role to play in ensuring that the whatever quantum of energy that we have is managed properly and that people also learn to understand the issues that are also involved, issues like the issue of energy theft, how it affects other people, and then energy management in terms of ensuring that the little that we have, we manage it efficiently we make sure that we do not waste energy. Okay. That's what it is. All right. You, you, you talk about um, one fundamental um, issue here, energy theft. Yes. Um, we, we'll see possibly in the course of this discussion, look at this particular aspect of um, our um, energy consumption um, as it relates to um, our development. But um, let's, um, let's look at um, the fact that uh, Nigeria as a nation um, the end of Africa, we are told, and all of that uh, economically. But we, we still have one aspect of our national life that still uh, called to question, and that has to do with um, uh, meeting our required energy, particularly in the area of um, ele electricity. The other one is uh, possibly gas. But here, let, let's talk more about um, electricity. OK. Um, yes. We are a country of 210 million people on average, and of course, we are supposed to have more energy than more electricity than what we currently have. But this is not about blaming either the current government or the middle past government. The problem has uh, always been there. The problem started a long time ago. The problem started even right in the 60s and 70s. Because as the population grew, so should our level of electricity generation, distribution, transmission distribution should have gone up as well. Mm -hmm. So um, it has taken over 60 years. And uh, when finally this sector was privatized, the unbundling occurred and privatization of the generation and distribution part of the value chain happened in 2013. When you look back from then till now, 
a lot has been done. Government is also making a lot of effort to uh, correct the absurd, uh, absurdities of the past, the mistakes of the past. Mistakes in the sense that many years ago, government, it was a government corporation, and government didn't do enough to um, increase available energy in line with the upsurge increase in population. But now a lot of efforts have been made, commendable efforts indeed, because if you look at where we are today and where we were on the 1st of November 2013 when the new investors came in, came on board, you will see that there has been a lot of um, improvement. But even at that, we still have more to do. We still need to produce, transport and distribute more of this. But if you look around, wherever you go now, there's more energy today than it was three years ago. More people have electricity today than they did a um, couple of years ago. So that's, that's what it is. Mm. It's about population increase, okay. and then increment in energy has to follow that population increase steadily, so that at the end of the day, we'll be able to match our energy production with population increase. Okay. Now, um, good enough, you mentioned something um, um, before the privatization of the electricity sector in Nigeria. And that you also said that this problem has been coming up gradually for over almost uh, 50 years or thereabouts. But the, what worries one is that um, at that time, it, when federal government was completely in charge, when we had NEPA, PSCN, and all the names and all of that, you know, incomes were actually accruing to NEPA. Federal government was also giving them some support and all of that. And then you begin to wonder what really happens to um, improving the facilities in order to expand the sup uh, supply chain, with which the private sector are now uh, the ones um, that we are heading with a whole lot of uh, money in it. What, 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 what's, what do you think uh, could have been the reason behind that at that time? Well, the truth of the fact is that whenever you call something public utility or public company or something owned by the government, first of all, on the business side, government has no business to be in business. Government's role is to provide an enabling environment for businesses to thrive. That's one. The other one is that because it was then a government corporation, um, the, the way it was done, or the way it was run as a whole, of course, there was not much efficiency then. But when you look at it now, for those who put down a lot of money to buy the utilities, and still trying to ensure that they clean the network, they do a lot of rehabilitation, they also bring in more investment. The way private business people think is different from the way government thinks. I think that's what it is. And I think that's why uh, it is, um, of course, commendable that government, as at 2001, the then president of Basanjo's government, decided that was wise and better to begin a process of unbundling of this sector and trying to privatize it or part privatization so that at the end of the day there will be a private company participation to bring in efficiency and to ensure that system works. So if we keep on looking at the past, we'll be blaming those who did it then. But even then, the intention may have been good but all over the world, we all know that government cannot successfully run business. And that's what's happened, essentially. Mm, okay. Now, but um, since uh, the privatization, um, to what extent um, can we describe uh, the, the support in terms of um, enabling environment for the private sector to really hit the grant running? Because when you look at it presently, um, we, we still discover that we are not generating enough um, up to the general, I mean, the potentials which we we have from uh, the, the sector. Well, government have been trying their best to provide the enabling environment to ensure that things are improved, to 
also um, make sure that all those things, policies and things that the regulatory framework that will make the system work have been put in place. It is a continuous thing. It's not a one day or one year or one regime thing. I think what we just need to recognize is the fact that things have improved. And that shows that things will further improve. So it's a matter of time. I'm sure that as time goes on, we will see better uh, power sector in the country. And we just need to be patient and allow the system to work and play our own role too. Um, generating enough, yes, all of this thing has a lot of uh, cost elements to it. But at the end of the day, what matters most is for us to focus on the positive to ensure that we um, produce more, transport more, distribute more, and for the customers too to know that they have a role to play and play that role so that the system will be making steady progress. That's what it is. It's an incremental thing. It's not a sudden upsurge. Not that you wake up tomorrow and then you begin to have 30,000 megawatts. And not that what we had yesterday remain today or is less today. It is more, actually. So it's, it's going up, but it's incremental in nature. In nature. At the end of the day, you cannot um, suddenly um, increase generation overnight or expand the transmission grid overnight or increase distribution overnight. Once you um, identify areas that need to be improved and those things have been done, I'm sure that it's a matter of time we'll have a better power sector in Nigeria. Okay, uh, but um, we, we all know that Nigeria is um, a growing economy, uh, majorly sustained by artisans. And um, if you look at it, um, artisans will not um, uh, possibly enjoy this um, attitude of uh, being patient because they want to earn their living every day. Artisans will use electricity, quite a number of them. And uh, some people are even saying that um, perhaps inadequate supply of electricity um, is part of the reasons why we have many of our young people going into um, transportation business, particularly riding Okada and all of that. No. For, how, for how long will Nigerians continue to be patient? Well, when I say we should be patient, yes. I also said that we will have noticed a steady incremental um, achievement in terms of looking back at what we had mm. and what we currently have. So, which means we are making progress. I also agree that it is important to have electricity so that uh, those small scale uh, industries or the lower one, the artisans, can be able to engage in their trading activities and even production uh, activities. But again, they also all have a role to play. That's why I mentioned the issue of energy theft. Because when you're talking about uh, energy availability and the little that is available is being stolen right, left, and center by those who are supposed to pay for it but are not paying for it. That is also depriving the honest people, the honest ones who are willing to pay, it be, they are being deprived of that same electricity. So this thing comes in um, two ways. So at the end of the day, I think what we all need to do is to ensure that we all play our role, whether as government or as operators or as consumers. That's what it is. Okay. Now, uh, this energy theft that you mentioned, uh, do, do, do you think um, this is likely um, to be possible without the connivance of some of those officials who work in that sector? Well, I've been asked this question several times. Not necessarily so. Okay. An ordinary electrician, ordinary person 
can bypass the meter without any specialist help. Mm. We have electricians everywhere, and we all know that when you build a house, usually you call an electrician, and they are the ones that do most of this work um, to wire up the house and get it ready to be connected to the grid. That is not to say that there are no bad eggs in uh, establishment all over, but I don't want people to think that it is only where the disco starts to connive with these chiefs that those acts can be carried out. We have seen instances all over the country, all over, where people that were caught had nothing to do with the power sector. They are just smart, intelligent people who devise a way to, because people want meters. Now meters are being rolled out. Now, having the meters, some of them now feel that paying for it, vending, buying credit and paying through their prepaid meter, they now find it will even be more expensive than when they were crying and complaining about estimated billing. So it, it all depends on where, how, and what comes the way of our people. But the point I'm making is that, as it is, um, the people that work for us are Nigerians. Mm. They are not Malaika from heaven or angels. So you will still have a few, a very few of them, who will be bad eggs. And we always tell people that they need to, we tell our customers that if you see something, please say something. Report such a uh, kind of thing if it happens wherever you are. And we'll deal with it robustly. We'll not uh, let it pass. But I'm saying that the issue of energy tech goes beyond only uh, workers of television companies. It is also involved ordinary people, ordinary Nigerians, ordinary engineers, ordinary landlords, ordinary. We've even caught uh, somebody that was half illiterate, barely literate, mm -hmm. who was caught vandalizing the equipment. But the vandals, too, is another thing. Apart from bypassing meters, you have a lot of instances where cables or prizes are vandalized. A whole transformer, injection substation, they go there and vandalize all these things. These are thieves. So the issue of connivance may not be true in most cases. Perhaps in few cases, and even in those few cases, if we get to know and we, are, we track all of these things, we'll deal with it accordingly. We will not allow it to pass. Mm. Now, if we have uh, talked about um, energy theft, what about energy wastage? Is it similar? or And how, how, how do you think, um, before we begin to look at um, energy and um, sustainable go uh, development in Nigeria? Now, energy management is very, very important. The issue of wastage is a very worrying thing. It's very, very common. And I'll give some instances. Go around any major cities in Nigeria today, Swiss capitals, on, go to those major roads where there are so many shops. Mm. On Saturday evening, before the shop owners leave their shop, they usually put on the light in front of the shop. They call it security light. They'll put it on. Some of them leave at 6 p.m. or even 8 o'clock in the night. And they will go, but guess what? Once they leave on Saturday, they won't come back until Monday morning. So what you find is that the whole of Sunday, when there is uh, power, you will now see that all those lights will be on all day. And in most cases, the people that do that are people that do not have meters. That's why we're happy that the very one has taken up the initiative of ensuring that all households in Nigeria at some point will be fully metered because people leave lights on all the time. In Ogun State, in Oyo State, Lagos State, Kano, Plato, in Abuja, you, you find it everywhere. And every time you put on that light that you do not need, where you put it on, you are depriving another person of the opportunity to turn on their own lights. That is what it is. So it's a very it's a very common thing. 
And in some cases, you go to some homes, people will be watching television, the sitting room downstairs, the whole family, and they will leave all the lights of stairs on. You enter their toilet, nobody is there, the light is always on. Kitchen light is always on. All these are wastages that are avoidable, and the more we do this, the more we make it impossible for other people to have light, because light, as it comes into your house, is like the way the water comes through the pipe into your zinc, for instance, or your wash and basin. Every time you turn it on, you are calling for water from the pipe, through the pipe. If you now put on that, if you turn on that water tap, and you're not doing anything with it, what that means is that you are, you are diverting all the water through the pipe into that location, and you're wasting it for no reason. Whereas, if you have turned it off when you don't need it, somebody else who needs it will do the same thing, turn it on, and water will be available. As soon as water is coming from a single tank, and you just open it somewhere and you're just wasting it, what it means is that by the time you empty the tank, everybody else in that premise will now have water to use. That's the thing with electricity. Mm. All right. Now, um, it, but, but um, it's, um, it's a statement of fact that um, the per capita um, consumption of energy in Nigeria does not meet the needed energy in terms of um, those who are in various activities that will require electricity in I mean, but um, where I actually want to go is that um, in Nigeria, the power privately generated is such a very huge one. People using generators here and there. When you have a situation like that, I mean, economically, will that not also affect um, the private uh, sector invest investors in uh, electricity distribution? Because some people might even say, I don't even need the official electricity. I may just be on generator and all of that. Well, first of all, I want our people to understand that using generator costs five times more than mm -hmm. what you get from the grid. That's number one. Number two, we can't take it away from people the choice as to how or what kind of um, system they want. If somebody wants to be off grid, you can't stop them from being off grid. However, um, the, the, the reason why you find so many generators and people using generators is still tied to the fact that we do not have enough energy. Today we have enough supply. Go to Magudu in Lagos State. All the houses there, they have generators. But they hardly ever have to use it because the premium service they are getting from Ikeja Electric is such that it enables them to um, have power from the grid better power, more quality power, more stable power when it's available. So if you go to Abuja, so many estates like Sun City Estate and so many others, you find it that they have more supply, supplies that are well over 20 hours a day. They don't need to use their generator. It is more expensive to use their generator and that's a fact. So if and by the time you begin to have more quantum of electricity, all over the country, the use of generation will not, will not be necessary at all. And I believe that will happen in our lifetime. It's a matter of time. Um, the way things are going now, with all the work being done by the federal government, by the operators in the power sector, I'm sure that we are going to have a better, a better power sector in the near future. All right. Now, um, since um, the major source of um, generation of power in Nigeria is um, hydro and thermal. But uh, some people are also saying that uh, with the potential deposit of coal, for instance, in Nigeria and some other um, natural um, um, gifts like that, that Nigeria could still take advantage of such things to complement the hydro and the uh, thermal stations we have. Do you see the, poten the potentials in this as to uh, possibly improve power generation in Nigeria? Well, we believe that um, it is good to have a mixed grid of different kind of sources of power generation. But we also have to look at the cost of doing all of this. Mm. Some are more expensive to do than the others. Again, I'm not 
I'm really going to talk about cost. All I'm going to say is that there's nothing wrong in generating power from uh, gas, hydro, solar, waste, and so many other sources. But all of these uh, come at a cost. All of these bring to the fore. It, it, it brings out the reality of what and what it will cost us to um, get those things done. So, and for the end users too, it also speaks to the same issue of the cost, cost of production that will determine the cost or the amount that people will have to be paying for such. But again, like I said, efforts have been made to increase generation. And in doing so, I'm sure they will have to look at other we have the uh, wind turbine, we have uh, solar, different other ways of ensuring that we have more electricity. That's, that's the most important thing. And of course, that uh, is happening gradually and that will happen more. The issue of coal, even in some countries, they use some other methods, you know. So, but the major thing, the ultimate goal, is sufficiency, having sufficient electricity, generating more, which is production, producing more electricity. Once you have more, and by the time you get to the end user, they are also able and willing to pay for it so that those who are producing it can have enough to produce more. Then at the end of the day, everything will uh, Work out well. Mm. All right. Well, um, it's still focused live on OGTV, and uh, we are still looking at energy and sustainable development in Nigeria, um, the way forward. Uh, my guest in the house is uh, still our barrister, uh, Sandy Odunton, and uh, he has given us a background and uh, certain things that we need to know when it comes to electricity uh, supply and usage. Uh, we'll take a short break. By the time we come back, we will be looking at um, how adequate um, energy supply will help the growth of um, our economy in terms of uh, usage, adaptation, and um, all that um, is necessary, particularly by the artisans uh, in and around us. So don't go away. We'll be back after this short break. <music> what happens when we elect public servants and don't tell them what to do for us. Voting is not the end. It is just the beginning. Fellow Nigerians, do you know that constituency projects are actually your projects? Do you know that constituency projects are funded by the federal government? Do you know that you can track release of constituency project funds for projects located in your constituency and follow up to know how they have been executed? Constituency projects happen because government does not want to leave any community out in development efforts. You have a responsibility to know what constituency project has been planned for your community, how much has been allocated for it, and whether value for money has been delivered. Take ownership of constituency projects located in your community. Protect them because they belong to you. Government knows about your needs and is planning for you. 
government needs your help to ensure quality delivery know that constituency projects are actually your projects protect your constituency project my constituency my project for information on funds allocated to projects in your constituency call 0800-2255-4272 this message is from the independent corrupt practices and other related offenses commission and the national orientation agency Welcome back. It's we focus live on OGTV, and uh, if you are just joining us, we are discussing energy and sustainable development in Nigeria, the way forward. And uh, my guest is uh, Barista Sandy Odutu. Um, and um, in this second leg of uh, this discussion, we will see how much of um, our utilization of energy that we can do in order to um, improve uh, the sustainable development we are agitating or expecting in this um, country so um, uh, you can still be part of the discussion all right um, now we, we have had uh, so much we have talked and uh, some of those things that we as consumers uh, do that is not helping the electricity um, supply and consumption but yes. all the same now we still have electricity like you said it's uh, getting better but um, how, how do we now uh, get most of uh, the Nigerian artisans back to their various trades so that um, or possibly getting them to know that, okay, the situation is better than what it used to be. And um, if you are a welder, you can go back to your job. If you are a tailor, you can now use electric machines and all of that. How do we begin to possibly get Nigerian artisans back on, on the track? Well, as the energy supply situation continues to improve, I should think that naturally it will bring back the assistance to work. And I also think government at all levels also need to do a lot of enlightenment, of enlightenment to encourage these assistants who are now Okada riders to go back to work, but they should also notice and take note of the fact that whatever quantum of energy they consume, they have to pay for it. They should not steal energy. They should also manage energy. If they do that, they will realize that the cost of paying for energy will still be far, far lower than their overall profit, the profit margin. So. If they go back to doing what they do and ensure that they are honest enough such that whatever energy is supplied is paid for, as I went to you, then they will get more energy and they will also be able to do more work on their part. So I think it will happen. In some areas, it is already happening. Because where you have 20 hours of supply. If you are a welder or a tailor in that area, that neighborhood, there's nothing, there's no doubt that you flourish, you want to do your work. So we, sh we just hope that within a short period we can have um, adequate supply of energy such that people will be able to do their work in their various areas. Now, um, let, let's, let's look at um, the industrial um, locations or industrial estates and yeah. all of that. Uh, it, it, do we have the same kind of supply that um, domestic uh, consumers get or that they, they have special um, arrangement for them? Then, Secondly, you mentioned that in some areas they get uh, energy supply of up to 20 hours a day or so yep. there about what's actually necessitated that why some will have about 20 hours some with 
less than 10 hours. Is there any... any... Okay. The control of electricity that you have yes. is a subject of location where you live, where you are. Okay. Energy availability in Nigeria is location based. Mm -hmm. Where the infrastructure passes through and where and where has been done. Then over the years, there has been a lot of neglect in the sector. So a lot of rehabilitation work mm -hmm. are going on. Okay. For instance, um, in Ogu State, uh, like in Abeokuta, the capital of Ogu State, if you go to uh, Kenta Housing Estate, three years ago, their supply was very bad. When IBDC did some rehabilitation work, which is the kind of thing that all, other, all the other 10 districts did, after doing those rehabilitation work, the people in Kenta move up from an average of eight hours to a minimum of 16 hours today. Mm. That's an improvement. That's also an indication. It depends. If the moment more energy is available, it's because you can't store energy. It has to be given out. Once it's available, it will push to everywhere within the network to ensure that everyone has electricity, but some have more than the others. Um, like I said, it depends on where you live. Still in Abelkuta, if you live in Yeonlukosi, uh, Ewange State, uh, Presidential Hitop, Obadaoko, Oluki Village, and a few others, all those areas you are guaranteed 20 hours. Mm -hmm. Whereas if you live in Ashiro, Bonogu, and Obantuko, it is still less than eight hours. So it all depends. But efforts have been made to upgrade those ones. When that one happened, they move them up to the band that takes care of that number of hours. So those are the kind of thing that is going on. And that's why I said the reform, the reform process on its own is a journey. What started in 2001, up to now has been a long journey and we're not yet there but as we as long as we move forward as we inch forward we're getting closer and closer to being there it's just that it will take a bit of time but we'll be there okay now let, let's look at the uh, electricity sector as a business venture is it an area where where maybe um some um, individuals, okay, or young Nigerians could say, okay, we want to invest in electricity business. Uh, how, how, um, how feasible is such a thing? Because we have 10 discos presently in Nigeria. 11 discos. Ele sorry, 11. And uh, I'm not too sure whether the 11 discos um, could adequately take care of this expanding population we have. When they took over, we used to have a population estimate of about 180 million. Now we now have a population estimate of about 200 million plus. So it means the population is growing. The demand for electricity will be high. Is it, a, is it an environment where people can invest uh, as a source of uh, business income? There are so many areas through which people can <coughs> invest. Um, there's no doubt about that. But it is not a question of whether they can cope with, the 11 disciples can cope with the population or not. As long as there are electricity that are generated and transmitted to the distribution companies, they will surely be able to distribute. What has been happening is a question of insufficiency. If you don't produce enough, you cannot transport enough, and you cannot distribute enough. Mm -hmm. And to produce enough also requires a lot of things. Okay. The investment, the other factors. If you have a thermal plant, for instance, or long power plant in La Fapaland too, as long as there's not enough gas to go there, Papaland will continue to produce as below their optimum capacity. Mm -hmm. So those are the issues. It's not an issue of whether they can cope or they cannot cope. The so, issue is that the increment will only happen when those things like production of it, 
mm. like trans transmission. Once those ones go up, division will go up. Once there's reduction in production, there will be reduction in transmission and reduction in distribution. So, so it would be safe for me to then ask you, what uh, is there any synergy between the electricity um, energy sector and um, maybe oil energy sector? Since um, this, it, there is a lot of synergy. There are about 25 power plants now that depend on gas. So there's a, a lot of um, relationship between our generation companies and the gas company, the gas suppliers. So there's no way you can do anything successfully in this value chain if there's no collaboration. There is collaboration, there is cooperation, mm. and there is an alignment going on, ensuring that we all do things the same way so that at the end of the day, there will be enough energy for the country. Mm. All right. Now, um, from your explanation here, you said um, some locations that I probably would see as a um, high bro area would have high, uh, are having high energy supply. Now, majority of those who are artisans who built some of these um, little, little uh, works around us are people who live in the areas that I would probably call the traditional setting which might not have the privilege of having 16 or 20 hour supply. Now, if you want to look, talk about the economic uh, development of the nation, the bulk of the people stay around where energy supply is very low. How, how, would, they, how would they be able to uh, possibly uh, feel um, comfortable when they don't have enough energy for them to do what they intend to do? Okay, let me correct the notion that High many hours of energy goes to high bar area. No, okay. Again, using the example of where we are in Abeuta here, the last time I checked, Obadako is not a high bar area, and Obadako has as much supply as presidential heat top, the one guest it, or ladering, even more than ladering. Obadako, like I said, it is location based. Okay. The way the country is wired, it depends on where you are. That's what you determine how many hours of energy you have. Those that didn't have as many hours as they wanted, there have been a lot of them that have been moved upward. That is, they have been given more hours. As, we, as more electricity become available, so will there be electricity everywhere. There's no discrimination in distribution. It is just a question of location. If you are the one staying closer to where the energy passes through, you get more. Mm. Not that because you are a high area or you are a rich man, that's why you get more. No, that's not the case. So, and where there are bilateral agreements, where an estate or some people come together and ask a disco, if you can supply us this at a higher rate, We'll be willing to pay at least that will save us the use of generator and the use of generator buying diesel and maintenance of generator so it all depends oh, okay so uh, if, if you have more power. supply you are likely to pay more than those yes. who, who have um, uh, low uh, okay consumption yes. all right now um having look at um, all, all, of, all of this all of this now recently um we do hear different um, uh, com complaints here and there. Incidentally, on our station here, we do have a weekly program that um, uh, the disco around us here, you know, and you hear people who call and all of that. You talked about uh, um, um, that federal government intend to meet everybody. And we have heard that we have gotten so many, even in Ogo State here, but you yeah. still discover that it's, a, it's a, a lot difficult for people to have access to these uh, same meters that we've been told are available. Okay. Um, every franchise area yes. is divided into five bands, in some cases four. Band A, Band B, Band C, Band D, and Band E. Mm -hmm. E essentially are people in the rural areas lowest paying customers. Mm. 
Okay. Now, <clears throat> the metering that is going on now is starting from band A. People who already have over 20 hours of electricity mm. need to be metered first. Okay. So we need to stop the argument of estimated building, crazy building, this is not my bill, this is not what happened. So with that uh, scenario, mm. I understand that some discos now are on band B. When they finish between A, they will go to B. From B, they will go to C. From C, they will go to D and E. So even those who are not yet metered should be rest assured that it's a matter of time it will get to them. The intention is to meter every single household in this country. And that's a fantastic idea. But once everybody is metered, you have a pin meter. The leakages will be reduced if not totally stopped. And then there will be more basis for you to be able to measure your own consumption. Mm -hmm. If you have meter and you look at it, you can know when you are consuming too much electricity, where you need to manage electricity, and what you need to do to reduce your consumption. You can do a lot of that. For instance, if you have 20 hours of supply, you have no reason to be putting on your freezer during the weekend. Mm. It is frozen already and you are at home. Put it off. Okay. Yes. Mm. That will save you money. There are so many things that you do. If you need to iron clothes, face it squarely, iron it, and leave the place. Make it brief. But when you plug in the iron, and, and, you, the and, you, are playing, and you are doing something, or you are playing with your phone, then you are consuming a lot of energy. Mm -hmm. And then you turn around and say, ah, that meter is running too fast. No meter will run too fast. Mm -hmm. Every meter has been checked and certified fit for mm -hmm. its purpose. So at the end of the day, it is very important that everybody knows what their role should be. So mm -hmm. we want more. Yes, we get more, but even the little we have, let's manage it. As we get more, let's manage it. That's what it is. Okay, but for now, we, we, we have not generated enough in terms of, um, okay, let's say, okay, the total energy um, expectation for Nigeria. We have not really uh, met that um, generation. That's correct. All right. Now, my, my next question will now be, um, since we have three stages, in the electricity distribution chain, the generation, the transmission, and the distribution. Most times, the distributors are the ones that we Nigerians do see. Yeah. To what extent has the performance of the two other um, levels of the, um, the, the, the chain affected okay. the distribution? It does. When we have more production, yes there will be more product to transport to those that will distribute to the end user. Mm -hmm. That is, whenever there is more generation, there will be more to, to transmit mm -hmm. through transmission. And there will be more to distribute. Whenever there is a system collapse or a problem that makes it impossible for us to get energy to distribute to our customers, we are the one that the customer knows, we are the ones that take all the arms. But we understand all of that. That's just the reality of the business. We are the ones that members of the public see. So whenever they have any issue, we are the ones that they come to. And we explain to them, we let them know openly and honestly what is going on and why we, they are not having enough of this product. Mm. That's what it is. Uh, OK. Now, so um, when, when, when you talk about um, uh, those other two um, levels of um, chain of um, electricity distribution that we don't see. Yeah. Um, it, it is uh, believed that um, perhaps there is need possibly to also uh, let consumers know that this, what we are distributing that is not enough, is not our fault, but it is what we get. But most times you will see argument between consumers and the discourse, particularly when it comes to the time they bring bills for those who are still using uh, bills and all of that. But um, we, we want to believe that uh, gradually we'll get there like you, like you said. Yeah. But now, um, since we are talking about sustainable um, development here, there is no way we will not look at uh, the economic um, um, 
cost and analysis of having inadequate supply and our gross domestic products. If you look at it from your vantage position, to what extent do you think um, inadequate supply have affected our economic development? Has it affected it at all? Yes, it has affected it. Um, part of the reason why you find a lot of artisans riding motorcycle or car mm -hmm. riders, if they have light and they can do a welder can do his work, a welder needs a necessity to do the welding, same thing with a tailor. Perhaps there will be less people on the street riding motorcycles. There will be more people, more artisans facing their own job. Um, it is it, it is very... When you depend so much on self-generation, mm -hmm. it will make the product that you are producing to be more expensive. More expensive, yeah. Because you get, you get to produce it, you, you, you are using a method, self-generation, to produce what you are producing at a higher cost. But if you get power from the grid, it is cheaper for you at the end of the day, and that will be a better alternative. So, back to your question, lack of or lack of sufficient electricity has adversely affected the Nigerian economy. Are we getting out of this um, soon? Yes, because day in, day out, the federal government set up, uh, there's a committee on what they call decade of gas to ensure that they look into the issue of gas clearing, bringing more gas into the system, and at the same time, ensuring that uh, electricity is um, generated, more is generated, more is transmitted, and more, of course, is distributed. So with these steps being taken at that level, I believe that is a matter of time. We'll get there. We will surely get there. Mm, all right. Yes, um, it's uh, on that uh, reassuring note that uh, we are going to drop the curtain here. You have heard from uh, my guest on the program today, Bar Barrister um, Olurutimi Sandy Odunto, uh, who is also a stakeholder in the electricity distribution in uh, this country. Um, where several times he has actually uh, discussed issues relating to electricity and um, that much he has also done on the program here today. So we thank you for coming on the program. Thank you very much. Thank All right. you. Um, that's where we are going to drop the curtain on Focus Live uh, this week. Uh, next week is another time together on the program where we'll be bringing you another guest with another topic. If you enjoyed today's discussion, why not join us next week? But until next week, I leave you in the hands of Almighty God. Bye-bye. <laughs>